Our ideal patient, Mary, is essentially coming to us not to have to make decisions. She's got a before, but we need to take her to her and after. And one of the ways that we can do it so that she enjoys the journey is to limit the number of decisions that she has to make, which is where it goes back to what I said for you two, as you're joining us and getting comfortable with it. The confidence that they have in you at the beginning is reflective of what they have in the business and every interaction they have. problems that he had basically, blood mm -hmm. clot through his heart like three years ago and had loads of problems since and then started getting back on track didn't he and then he was a little bit of a driver wasn't he sort of new because he, he was an army medic yeah now he's a, like a sergeant, sergeant something drill so he yeah. sort of was a little bit like I know where I'm talking about type yeah. person drivers you're just listening drivers you're just listening and yeah. you're just agreeing and you're asking questions that give them the option so with the driver, he the classic kind of attribute of a driver is he wants to be in control of what happens. But I mean, a sergeant major is a classic driver, like would be a driver, you know, there's no way he's not going to be. So from your point of view, when you recognise that he is a driver, you're able to take, you're always talking about where he wants to go, you're always agreeing with him, and you're always giving him the option of what he wants to do. Yeah. So if he says, um, you know, he comes through the door and he starts to talk to you and he tells you everything. Oh, listen, that sounds like we can help. We have a couple of options for you. He immediately responds to that. So we can do this option or we can do that option. We can start with a free telephone consultation or we can start with a, a session, you know, to me by the sounds of it. Which one do you want? Tell me more. So you tell him more about the telephone and you tell him more about the potential of a discovery or, you know, if he wants to go straight in for a paid for session, which one works best for you? And with a driver, that's all you do. Which one do you want? Which one works best? Okay, um, I'm looking in the schedule. Um, we've got Wednesday at 12 or, or Friday at two. Which one do you want? I've got a 30 minute appointment or a 60 minute appointment. Which one do you want? And it'll be the same when he comes out. So that, that physio needs to, the physio needs to continue the conversation of what do you want to do? Do you want six session or do you want nine session? And at every point he has to feel as though he's in control. And you'll do that with options. So the driver will be the one that comes in and tells you what he's done, what he wants. So you'll have a clear idea of what he thinks. He'll have done his research. He'll have been on the internet. He'll have spoken to three different people that day. He'll have spoken to a doctor. He'll have, he'll start to say things like, well, I told that doctor I needed X or I told somebody I needed Y and they didn't give it to me. Yeah. Okay, what do you want us to do? Oh, I would like to get my pain gone or I'd like to get six okay cool we'll, we'll go with it so whenever you recognise them the big thing is not to fight with them even if you know you're right your communication skills have got to kick in and start to, to um, you don't get humble that's not the right word but you get very underneath him you, you, come, you just come under him and you know that you're the one who ultimately in the end is going to make the decision for him but you're going to let him feel as though he is that's drivers <laughs> Drivers are your, are your lawyers, your um, doctors, your positions of authority, supervisors, leaders, business managers. Usually you get, um, with most business owners or a lot of business owners, they, like whenever you've had issues where people have like left after two minutes because they are like, their appointments overran by two minutes and they should have been in at six rather than two minutes past six, that would be a driver. And invariably, then, like whenever you guys have said that to me, we've had a guy who's left because it was like three minutes over or whatever. He'll be a business owner. Yeah. Nearly always a small business owner who like hasn't been able to figure out how to manage his time, doesn't have a clue how to like not be wherever he needs to be, and can't think of anything worse than being like five minutes late. And what they'll always do is start to use the assumption of I'd never do this to my customers. Like their opinion of themselves is so much higher than what actually is going on in life, it's beyond belief, but that's a classic driver. So when they start to like to talk like that, that's how you know who, who they are. So even in that scenario of a driver who's like, um, oh, I'm a couple of minutes late, or like the session's a couple of minutes late, oh, would you like to come back? I've got a couple of different options. And the key thing is just to make sure he feels as though he's in control all the time. 
So that, that's how you'd recognise them, usually business owners, lawyers, doctors, dentists, positions of authority, where all day long they are managing people and used to getting their own way and telling people what to do. That's the classic, that's the classic guy. And the way that you get what you want to have happen and what he needs to have happen is you come below them. Okay, no problem, what do you need, what do you want? and they'll start to tell you that they've researched it, they've looked at it, they're very confident in their own decisions. They'll probably want to have it happen very fast, like that, like that day. That's again, as a classic scenario of a driver. It, it needs to happen fast because in the background of it, he's done his research, he's spoke to doctors, he's asked questions, he's confident in his decision making. He made the decision last night and he wants it to happen tomorrow. That's what drivers do. Your amiables are a little bit more tentative and they've took a little bit of time and they're not quite sure and they definitely need the discovery and they need a little bit more love and a little bit more care and they want you to take the decision away from them because they don't want the pressure. The driver, think about who he is, business owner, leader, doctor, dentist, he's used to making decisions all day. He's very confident in making those decisions. Therefore, he's confident in making this decision about what he needs to do next for his health. So you, your verbiage and your word order has to be incredibly effective, but it also comes with recognizing who they are. As a, as a general rule, you, you might get one or two out of 10, but the world isn't full of drivers. It's predominantly amiables, a few analyticals, and depending upon where you are, expressives. I've always been the same because I've been a class long, but for a while, well, I don't have what I've recognized. Well, anyway. yeah, think, but think about it. I've just given you a classification of who they are. Business owners, leaders, um, doctors, lawyers, dentists. There are not that many of them in society, is, as a general rule. Yeah. Like 3% of the population is small business owners. Probably 1% of the pop less than 1% will be doctors or lawyers. So there's just a very small pocket of those types of personalities. Think about your amiables. You could walk through Hartlepool Town Centre this morning and eight out of 10 of them will be yeah. amiables. They're just lovely, contented, you know, get up and go, whatever will be, will be kind of mm -hmm. people. So you're much more likely to come across an amiable because that's a reflection in society. Analyticals, not as many. Again, enough, enough of them, and one or two expressives. So I would probably wager it would be five amiables, one analytical, two expressives, or two two analyticals, two expressives, and one driver will probably be what you'll you'll come across. So your amiable is the one that we've built the business around essentially. Mary's an amiable. Yeah. Mary is a, um, help me make a decision, give me some love, give me some care. I don't really want to get this decision wrong. I know where I am. I don't really know where I want to get to. I just know that this is not quite right at the minute. And if I um, commit to you, will you love me? Will you care for me? Will you take me under your wing? Will you help me make the right decision? That's our classic. Um, that's our classic passion. Yeah. And that's the, that's the difference. She doesn't want the options because it's the last thing she wants to have to do today is to make another decision and potentially get it wrong. Make sense? She, the, our, our ideal patient, Mary, is essentially coming to us not to have to make decisions. She's got a before, but we need to take her to her and after. And one of the ways that we can do it so that she enjoys the journey is to limit the number of decisions that she has to make, which is where it goes back to what I said with you two, as you're joining us and getting comfortable with it. The confidence that they have in you at the beginning is reflective of what they'll have in the business and every interaction thereafter. With our ideal client as an amiable, the, their first impression of you helps put them at ease to make them feel as though they don't have to think anymore. If you think about it in your own life, how great is it when you find a solution to a problem and you just know you've made the right decision based upon the first interaction? It's just the most euphoric feeling on earth that you are moving towards a solution to a problem, even though the solution hasn't even taken place. Dentist, it's the best feeling in the world when that tooth pain arrives and you know you've put up with it for like 10 days and it's just getting worse and worse and then all of a sudden you're awake twice a night 
for this throbbing that's going on every time the painkillers wear off and then you wake up the next day and you decide to do something about it what's the next fear getting in getting in if you think about what you go through the continuum this is what humans do when you really understand what goes on is decision making you and i will suffer or procrastinate for seven days with this thing and it's like just starting to niggle and it's there and we're thinking well, will it go i'll take a few ibuprofen and you know maybe we won't eat some sugar or i won't have coffee in the morning i won't drink ice cold water whatever it will be because i don't want to make it worse so for that whole seven days we've learned to live with it right or we like we're in this decision making process where we're fighting with ourselves about what we do next then one morning you wake up twice through the night when you think right enough is enough so to reach the point where the pain um, is worse than the effort or the pain is greater than the effort that you'll have to put in to get it solved that's every single thing today whether it's a woman who's about to leave her husband whether it's a guy who's about to quit his job at some point the pain exceeds the effort that you'll have to put in to find the solution and the uncertainty that you'll have to live with Make sense so far? Yeah. Put that back into the world of the girl or the guy who's woke up this morning with a tooth pain and decided to make an appointment with a dentist. So you wake up, it's now six o'clock in the morning and you can't get back to sleep. So for the last seven days you've lived with it, right? And you've lived with this dissonance and this tension and this awkwardness and this not quite right. And you know something's all right, but you've been all right, life goes on. The moment, the moment that you decide you want a solution to that tooth pain, the next fear that you have is what if I can't get in? Now that fear has just increased the pain or the thing that you're feeling in your mouth by about 50%, because now it's a decision that you can't control. So because the decision was yours originally, this is pretty deep, but it's cool. The decision was yours originally, and it was like, shala shala, I'm not quite sure, I'll see how it goes, but I'm in control right now. The moment that you make the decision to get the tooth looked at by the dentist, all of a sudden you're not in control anymore. Now, this is all like really subliminal, but this is what's going on with every single patient that you will come across. If you give them any reason at the beginning of the relationship to doubt the place that they're going and the decision that they've made, when they do arrive at the place that they're going and the decision that they've made, they will find something not right. If I give you any reason to doubt the shoes that you've just bought, might not look good in the dress that you were planning to wear, you'll take them back. And what you'll do is you'll spend 21 days torturing yourself about whether or not you should or you shouldn't. And doubt will always win and they'll go back. So that's the decision-making process that your, your patient will go through every day when they look at you. And if they don't see that certainty, you, you've opened up, like they're walking through the door, scanning for a crack. And like, they're not doing this, but essentially this is kind of like, they're just looking around for any reason not to want to do business with you on your terms. They might do business with you, but they'll do it on their terms.